on water. At this time, I'll call the meeting of the Marshall City Council to order with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to welcome everyone here this evening. We have an agenda before us in this regular meeting of Marshall City Council. Are there any changes to the agenda this evening? If not, we'll operate under that agenda. We'll move to the first action item, which would be to consider the approval of the minutes of the regular council meeting that was held on October 22nd, 2019. So the council does have the minutes. Are there any corrections to note? Move approval. Second. Second motion by Craig, seconded by Russ to approve the minutes as they have been presented. We'll move to a vote. We'll close the voting and the motion does pass. We'll move then to the next agenda, which is agenda item number three, and this is to consider the award of bids for the municipal bu building renovation project. So um, there's been um, a lot of um, a lot of work that has uh, preceded this action, including work sessions that the council has had, a uh, city hall committee that has done a lot of work, as well as uh, uh, several uh, professional studies that has all ultimately culminated with the recommendation to advertise for bids and those bids were received this past Thursday. They have been evaluated by our staff and our architect and there is a recommendation before us. Sharon, I'll turn to you. Mr. Mayor, we do have Barbara Marks from Engen and Associates, the, our architectural firm to present the, the bid results and then also all of the alternates. So I'll have her come forward. I believe the the uh, bid tabulation form was included in the council packet and uh, there is a recommendation that was also included, emailed out on Friday and a hard copy was presented to you with the recommendation from the architect. Welcome, Barbara. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor, City Council, and City staff. We appreciate being here. Uh, as Sharon just stated, our project went out for bid. We had four addenda, and in the end, we had three bidders for the project. Uh, the numbers came in uh, within 9% of each other. The low bid, whether it was base bid or base bid plus alternates, was Brennan Companies out of Mankato. Um, there are a couple items to note on that just for reference and they are in the data that was given to you. The calendar days do not include the time for abatement. Just want to make sure that that's, oh, everyone's aware of that. And then also their base bid included a separate mechanical equipment room. Um, we did ask for references and receive some. We spoke to three different individuals. Uh, we did some calling yesterday, which is sometimes a problem on a holiday, so not everybody was there. Um, but every, all the references came back very positive. Um, and specifically when speaking about um, dealing with the schedule, existing buildings, and working with surprises that come up that usually do when you are dealing with ex uh, existing construction. Uh, based on all this information, um, we do recommend that the city hires Brennan companies with the base bid and alternates one through five. And I will just mention briefly which those are. And alternate one, uh, the base bid had window treatments in the council chambers, but not necessarily all of the other spaces. We, uh, the alternate one is window treatments on every window. Uh, alternate two is an additional automatic entrance at the alley side of the, of the building. So we always had an automatic entrance on the public side. Uh, alternate three is a kind of a plug and play for an emergency generator if there's ever an issue and you need to have emergency power. Alternate four is for a ship's ladder on the roof. Um, the reason we made that one an alternate is that the amount of equipment up on the roof had been less. Um, there is some talk of potentially um, 
making the server room uh, a a more um, a equipment on the roof to to deal with the server room that was taken out in the course of the project but now we're talking about adding it back in if you have more equipment up there it's a good idea to have a ship's ladder up there as opposed to the ladder that's kind of hanging right on the wall um, and then alternate five is reconstruction of the lower lower level slab so it's taking <coughs> the entire slab out it's dropping it approximately six inches and rebuilding it in that location so those those are the base bids and the alternates that we are uh, suggesting to you Barbara, how about the elevator? That, that was what I touched on earlier. Um, one of the things that we do after um, bids come in is we want to make sure that the information is shared and everybody's on the same page. When we did talk to not necessarily the um, Brennan companies, but we went and talked to their elevator subcontractor, he, our alternate was to have a room with a um, separate, excuse me, an elevator equipment machine room. That is what his base bid was. That's why we are saying let's not accept that because there's, there's no point. It's already there and why pay for something that's already there? So that's just part of our due diligence on that. Okay. Can I also have, can you also explain a little bit further uh, the automatic entrance? Sure. On the front of the building, the public side of the entrance, it's, it's, it's a handicapped accessible <coughs> footpad, and that, that is a given. We need to have a accessible way in and out of the building. We also wanted to give the option to have that on the private side, which is more likely the staff side. So on the back side of the building, it would allow for the handicapped accessible entrance there as well. So the recommendation then is for I think the, I think Council Member De Kramer had a question. Just, go ahead. Okay. Um, the question on those doors. We had talked in our one meeting that uh, having a what I'm and maybe I'm misinterpreting an automatic door. You're talking mm -hmm. uh, is the ADA compliant? Yes. Hit the button? Correct. Okay, and not yes. the electronic entry. Right, it's, okay. it's the ADA compliance. We have compliance on the front of the building. We're just adding compliance to the back. Okay, thank you. So the recommendation is the base bid plus the alternates, and that would then come to a total of $5,030,200. Right, with alternates one through five, correct. Right. Okay, uh, any other questions, clarifications for the architect? Uh, could you explain the unit price items? Sure. Uh, in a project, there are certain things that we know that come up as a given, basically. Um, oftentimes, we see that engineered fill is a requirement. We like to get a unit price ahead of time so that we know um, ahead of time what we might be dealing with. So it's not actually, um, it, it's saying per cubic foot of fill, for instance, the price for changing varying from the direct uh, from the drawings it would be an ad and we establish the price ahead of time so that we know what we're dealing with so for instance unit price two and unit price three that is dealing more so if we would not accept the alternate on the lower level the need for unit price two and three i'm not going to say is evaporating but it's going away significantly because of rebuilding that lower floor um, how likely is it that we would end up having to pay extra for the unit price one item? Well, we have soil borings, but I can tell you that we've had a project before where a soil boring was done and 10 feet over, there was something that nobody knew about. Um, it, it's a guessing game. Our, our, our drawings are based on the engineer's estimate of how far we have to excavate. So that's based on the information obtained from a separate engineer. Um, it, it could vary. Typically on a site like this, it wouldn't be all that significant. So the uh, total um, estimate of construction costs for the levels and the site are $6,139,650 based on choosing alternates one through five, is, is that 
That would include the contingency. That right. includes contingency. Everything. Right. So that, that's our estimate of 6.139 million. Um, now there's also an estimate for furniture and equipment of 225,000. Is that still in there? Yes, that's in there. That's an additional amount. That's an addition to it. So okay. there's a difference between uh, the construction cost and the project cost. Right. And then there's also a hazardous material removal that we're going to be voting on mm -hmm. tonight of about $67,000, I believe. And tonight I just learned of what that number was. Right. So as we move forward, then we would begin what we call an ongoing cost summary. So we would keep a tally of some of those items so that we can keep um, so that we can give better advice as we move forward, right. not just on the construction contra uh, construction project, but the project as a whole. So and based on, maybe just clarify the contingency because that's a significant number that's right. based on an right. estimate of 12%. Sure, and the, when we, when we first did our estimate in September, or I shouldn't say the first, but the, the September estimate, um, not only our firm, but many, many other firms that we have talked to have seen a very, very volatile construction market. So we made our estimate based on the usual numbers that we have, and we made a conservative estimate, but we put a contingency on of 15% because we are seeing so much fluctuation right now. When you look at the first line of uh, the comparison, it show, or excuse me, the first column shows the estimate, the second column shows the base bid, and the third column shows the base bid plus the alternates. We, if we accept all of those plus those alternates, then we're going down to the 12%. Right. Yep. And. Uh Again, the, the furniture and equipment is an addition to those yep. construction costs. Exactly. And we also have relocation costs. Right. And we're going to be voting on a, a rental agreement of 138000 mm -hmm. which is an addition to these amounts here. Right. And I've okay. never had that number either from, do, from the city. Do we have any idea what the additional relocation costs will be in addition to the lease agreement? I think the lease agreement is almost containing, it's almost capturing all the expenses except for parking permits, which I think maybe could add approximately 5,000. And um, I'm not entirely sure how much IT electrical work needs to be done. The IT work may need to be done regardless of whether we're at SMSU or City Hall, because there's some IT upgrades that are needed. Mm -hmm. So I think the cost beyond the lease agreement is minimal in comparison to the, to the other items. The, uh, as far as the moving, are we gonna move ourselves then? There will be no cost for that? We're going to do all of the above. We're gonna move some ourselves. We, we are, have been in contact with the local moving company and uh, we may look at storage. So we do not have figures for that at this, at this time. Uh, when I add up the items, the, the base bid and uh, furniture and equipment and hazardous material removal and relocation, I come to about $6.6 .6 million. So um, is that a fairly accurate estimate, do you think, of what our costs are gonna be on this? Or? I have to be honest, I just received those numbers on moving today, as you guys said them. Um, so we, we, I don't have that fully in hand. We did send a letter to uh, administration with uh, what we refer to as items not included so that they can begin tallying a list of the larger project budget and yeah. I have not seen that So we today. have just begun to yep. start putting together yep. uh, a list of costs not associated with the bid here tonight and, and we will be bringing that forward when we consider the the bonding financing next steps which i think annette we talked about the last week in november okay it's not going to be till december um we can certainly bring cost estimates prior to that but that's what we were looking at so you're just to clarify glenn and you have these numbers too but the that is your estimate or your total would assume that 100% of the contingency is used, that the furniture bid came in, which hasn't been bid out at 
exactly what the total of the estimate is as well as the contingency would need to be used there. So, you know, I would assume we're dealing with a high estimate because you're dealing with the estimate plus you're dealing with the contingency on the estimate. That's, so. that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to give you um, flexibility in your choices. And then I will point out that in contingency, you're in control of the contingency, meaning that if you choose not to use something, that money goes back into your city budget and you absorb and reallocate where it goes. I just want to make it clear that, uh, you know, I know there was an article in the paper about the, the bid amount and about $4.9 million. And I hope the public doesn't have the perception that that's the entire cost of the project. You're a hundred percent correct. They need to know it's going to be quite a bit more than mm -hmm. the 4.9 million and could reach in the neighborhood of $6.6 .6 million, possibly. There, there is a difference between a construction budget and a project budget. I right. wholeheartedly agree with your and, statement. And uh, I know at our meeting, our work, uh, workshop, or, or our work, work session the other day, we talked a lot about communication, how we need to communicate with the community. And yep. part of that communication is providing them with good, reliable mm -hmm. information and not, we wanna make sure whatever we do, we don't mislead the public. Mm -hmm. And so um, good communication is important. And so I, I just wanted the public aware that uh, the 4.9 is not the entire cost right. of the project. It it's could be quite a bit more than that. And they Absolutely. should know that. Correct. Right. One of the things that we talked to the council with when we came with the original resolution for the financing mechanism is the unknowns and costs that were not included with the city hall project, mm -hmm. asbestos removal, the hotel next door, um, changes that may occur during the project. So I think we've been fairly upfront, but mm -hmm. it certainly doesn't hurt to to repeat that right well and on that note you know the the uncertainties that could come up in a project like this mm -hmm. when you're renovating a project um, I would like to recommend and in fairness I haven't talked to the committee about this yet but that the existing building committee would transition into what I would call a project oversight committee that would be able to work with staff work with the the professional engineers um, um, to kind of address some of those those questions that will come up. And in that way, that, that's the ability to, if a change order mm -hmm. is is suggested, to be able to act early on and to address the need for that change order as things happen, so. Um, one last question regarding this project, and that is, uh, uh, so what is, the status of the, the hotel building, how does that all affect this project as far as costs and what's gonna happen? From from the beginning, it's been in, it's been out, it's been in, it's been out. Um, right now, it is not a part of our work. We have been instructed that if during the course of the project, that if the building were to come down, then we would have to pivot and one of the things that we would have to do is consider putting what we would call like a new skin on that side of the building. Um, some of the things that might be triggered then is if let's say sake of argument, you made it a green space, well then do you put windows in? Um, you know, there's decisions that would have to be made. Uh, again, it's part of the reason we do have contingency because we know that things do change. Um, we would work with you and communicate with you to figure out what makes the most sense uh, for the city, for staff, for the public, and make recommendations based on past experience. If, if you were to put a new skin on, that, on the building, on the hotel side, and add windows, do you have any idea what that cost would be? I, I can't give you that right now. I, I have not calculated that. And I would say at this point, based on the current schedule, I don't, I don't know if there would be action taken on that hotel building as part of this project. I think it would be separate. There's mm -hmm. still an active proposal. And after that's, the fact. There's still an active proposal that's being entertained for Correct. redevelopment of that building mm -hmm. privately. Um, if you, I guess from my way of thinking, it, you know, when you if you build something the first time, it's easier to do it than if you reconstruct or remodel something later on and. Um, I would hope that we'd have plans exactly what we're gonna do with that property. I mean, that's, that's part of this project too, is where, what do we do with that project and what that side of the building looks like, whether there's gonna be windows or not windows. 
I mean, that should be part of an overall plan. If you're, you're doing something that's gonna last a long period of time and you wanna make sure you do it right and you think it through, and I, I would think that it would be good to have that planned out ahead of time rather than <laughs> dealing with it later on. Well, and, and I appreciate that. However, no decision has been made, so it's hard for us to speculate and make recommendations to you when we don't have the information of what you really want to do. Everything at that point is a guessing game and we prefer to give you better information than a guess. Thank you. Yep. Other um, questions, clarifications? Thank you, Barbara. Thank, thank you. you. And thank your firm for the work that we appreciate they've done it. to this point. Now it's up to the council. The, um, you have the recommendation, or is there any further discussion? And what is the direction of the council? I'd like to make a motion to uh, approve the recommendation and award the bid to uh, Brennan Companies for base bid plus alternatives one through five. Motion by <coughs> Council Member D. Kramer. Is there a second? Is there a second to that motion? I'll second it. Seconded by <coughs> Council Member Schaefer. Discussion on the motion? Uh, Russ? Um, Mr. Mayor, I, I, again, I'm, I've only been on the council for you know, 10, 11 months, and, and prior to becoming on the council, I was a very adamant proponent of, of keeping the, you, the municipal building downtown and, and making use of an existing building. And, and, I, and I think the building was probably one of the newest buildings downtown, probably within the top five, I would guess. Um, but all through this process, I still have a problem with, and I know remodeling is gonna be more expensive than building new. Um, there has been talk about parking issues. I don't foresee parking to be an issue because we've got adequate parking around there. Um, whether the city employees park uh, or, or visitors park a block away and walk, or whether they block 50 feet, or whether they park 50 feet and walk. I mean, it's, it's, we've got adequate parking in the parking lots and around the facility. So I don't consider parking to be an issue. The problem that I'm, uh, that, I, that, that have been brought forth to me is that people, the constituents and people, whether it be in the coffee shop or meeting after church or whatever the case would be, they still have a problem spending $6 million. Now, I haven't had that much conversation since the bids were opened up last Thursday and it came in a lot lower than six, but as Councilman Bearcoller made reference to tonight, you add all those things back in, and again, the contingencies, the unknowns, and we know probably, uh, for in fact, we're going to have some change orders. Or in fact, you know, I can, we can, I, I don't want to say the word guarantee, but we almost can guarantee that we're going to have some change orders. So, I just, I've been asking myself, is this a good proposal for the next 50 years? And quite honestly, I've come to the conclusion that I can't support this project for the next 50 years. I think that we would be better off spending the money for a brand new building. I don't know where the brand new building would be located. I mean, acquiring land and all that would be, it would be costly as well. And again, this is just my opinion, and probably I'm the, gonna be on the island by myself, but we haven't, I haven't been given those numbers. I have no idea what a, what a brand new building would cost based on the square footage that we have, based on a one level building. You know, I don't know. I think. Um, maybe somebody can and, and educate me. I think the county, when they remodeled and put on their addition, I think it was about ten million dollars. I, I could be wrong. I don't know. That I, I, don't, I don't. I don't know that. But and I don't know the square footage. But I, I, I just. I just have a real problem. It's a historical building, and I know that. But I. I just would rather see some numbers. Uh, just a hypothetical. What it would have cost us to build a brand new building. That's my opinion. Thank you, Russ. Um, I, I, I am concerned about parking. I don't believe there are adequate parking spaces down next to City Hall. I believe that if, if we were to build a building other than downtown and Main Street, we'd have to meet the code requirements for parking, and I don't believe that our building would meet those code requirements, would it, if we were to build somewhere other than Main Street? Would we have adequate parking for that building and for the employees? Parking requirements are not called the parking requirements are city ordinance, but yes, we have to meet the uh, uh, ordinance requirements. But but Main Street doesn't have the same re Main Street doesn't have the same requirements that the rest of the city has. Is that correct? It is within downtown, so there are no parking. <clears throat> right. So I am concerned about the parking. I'm also concerned about the cost. 
I believe we can save millions of dollars of taxpayer dollars by uh, either purchasing or building a city hall other than at the current location. And uh, I'm, I think this will be a waste of taxpayer dollars. I, like I said, I, I think we're spending millions more than we need to. And uh, so I, I also am I'm opposed to this project. I think we can come up with a better plan at a better location. Jim, then John. Um, you know, I, I've weighed this back and forth, and then the talk is we build new, should we remodel? I can't remember a town, I don't believe it was St. Olaf. Someplace in eastern Minnesota, they built a new city hall about $19.6 million. Building new is also very expensive. And I always weigh where we build it, that property comes out of the tax rolls. So there's a long-term cost to that. You know, the, the furniture's furnishings, that costs them the same in a new building. We gotta remember the remodel is 5,030,000. The rest is gonna cost us the same no matter what. If you build new, you build old, you, re, you remodel. Um, the contingency, I, you know, I like your idea, Mayor, I think I chatted with Sharon about it, about having the committee oversight on change orders. That makes the council very accountable to the taxpayers and communicate what the change orders are. Not, not that we don't doubt our staff can handle it. I believe they can do a wonderful job, but it's also different eyes on it as we spend <clears> this <throat> money. Contingency doesn't have to be spent. I mean, we, we could save 12%. They're not saying there will, be, there will be some change orders. I agree with you, Russ, there very well may be. Change orders also work both ways. We may have change orders that take money off the contract. Um, with that being said, I am gonna support keeping it downtown. I agree with Russ, there's adequate parking. The, uh, we're revitalizing block 11, so what does that show that developer? Yep, you can build downtown, but we're bailing downtown with our development. I think that gives the wrong idea of downtown, and I think it'll cost downtown rev or, um, property values on their properties by leaving. I think by building block 11 gets redone, city hall gets redone, and we do the, the hotel, we have revitalized our downtown, which has increased the property values to the properties around there. So we gotta look at the whole big picture of what we're doing here in this process, so. Thank you, Jim, John. And just, uh, I would like to remind everybody that we did have three different studies on this over the past 10, 12 years. Uh, I was on two of those studies, and in those conversations, we also looked at other buildings, uh, including several downtown, uh, we looked at uh, the discussion was in the meetings that we had uh, comments of building new came up, side discussions, we were always talking about, well, is this the right idea, whatever. The end result of each of those studies was to stay downtown, to remodel a building. That was our best option going through and uh, uh, remind it, it's uh, like Jim said, it's, it's not inexpensive to have a new building. We would require more land, which we do not own land in an area that would work for a city hall building. So we would have to purchase that. Uh, we'd have to purchase a much larger footprint uh, because of the ordinances on parking. And uh, uh, you know, then when we're all done, and one of the key things that ended up in our discussion at the meetings was we now have a building downtown that uh, really doesn't serve any good purpose for anyone else other than for a city hall that used to be a fire hall. It really doesn't lend itself for any kind of uh, apartment building or anything like that that's a good option. So we're kind of stuck with a, another old building downtown that we don't know what to do with. And that's gonna be expensive. So yes, fixing up a building is expensive, building new is expensive. We've looked at this thing every which way. The problem we've had is keep delaying this thing and it's just gonna get more expensive. There isn't anything out there that's gotten cheaper in waiting. And if we don't move ahead on this thing tonight, it's just gonna cost us a few hundred thousand dollars more in the next year or two years, another half million. Just go back and look at the quotes that we received over those three studies. Each time it's gone up, it's gone up about 400 to $500,000 a year. 
and it isn't that this thing is getting outrageous. This is probably the best plan that I've seen that corrects a lot of things in the building that we didn't address in the first two. Bringing the level to ground floor, getting that first floor even, correcting the problems with the, the salt occurred in the fire truck area, and making use of the building. So this is a very good plan to remodel a very sound structure and we have a good solid core structure in that building and we're making use of that rather than smashing it down and starting over again some other location or whatever we do. So I'm very much in favor of this. I think we've studied this thing every which way we could and the result is yes, this is the best plan for now. Thank you, John. Other, Mr. Mayor, I just, uh, I think that uh, Councilman De Kramer and Councilman Lozinski have summed up my feelings, but I do want to say that in the five years that going on six that I've been on council, I we continue to look at this. I think it's a good plan. You know, overall, just on the building itself, possibly going off location, could we save a little bit of money? Sure, we could. We could save some money, but not overall. I mean, again, like like Councilman De Kramer said, we end up with a building now that sits that we've, when we looked at this, this last study, part of it was is offering it up and I think there were actually feelers put out to developers and there was no interest in the building. You know, all of these projects to, to keep Main Street going, we have to invest in this. This isn't, a, this isn't a gimme, it's not a, there's no cheap alternative to this, but we are investing in the community. And I think the other thing to remember is, is that we're creating a place that houses city government, but you know, in today's age, I think that probably 90% of the business that comes into City Hall is from 5% of the residents. And I don't, think that's an, I don't think that's a gross understatement or an overstatement. I think that's probably pretty accurate. So we're really building something to house city government and we're gonna have a public meeting place in there. But I think the parking piece, we had a, 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 an example demonstration presented to us anonymously a meeting or two ago and I looked at the at the Google over the overshots from Google Earth, and I looked at the parking pieces that they put on there, and then I called up our city hall and looked at the lots and the parking areas there. And I think the ones that were shown as a positive example, I think we overscored them. You know, when you start counting slots, again, I think parking the people that have the complaint about parking don't look at it as you got to go around the corner and across the street. Look at how many steps you do. You know, if you shop at Walmart, if you shop at Menards shop at any of the big box stores, where do you park? I park far enough away so I don't come out with a, with a truck full of door dings. I walk further there than I've ever walked to go to City Hall. So when I go during the middle of the day, I go in the evening, depending, it just it doesn't matter. I probably park further to shop at Walmart or Menards than I do to, to come to City Hall. So I too am gonna support this. Any other discussion on the motion? Russ? <clears throat> One clarification, have we ever asked anybody to look at the municipal building for possible renovation or, or, or for other uses Elder. other than, okay, because I wasn't aware of that, but as Councilman D. Kramer said, uh, you know, we don't, we're, we'd be stuck with a building. Right now we're stuck with a hotel building until Apex came in and said, oh, I didn't realize the building was there. So now that developer was potentially interested in that building. Apex could be potentially interested in the city hall building, potentially. Local contractors, local developers, could be potentially if we were to vacate. We don't know that. Uh, and I wasn't aware of somebody going and offering a building up for developers in the past. So again, you're making a statement that we, oh, we're we gonna be stuck with something, we really don't know that. I mean, it, there's a possibility, but it's 50% chance that we wouldn't be stuck as well. Other discussion on the motion? I, I just have one more point. I, I know that we haven't looked at a complete new build, but we did look at the mercantile building. And that is new construction that has I believe upstairs there's no walls. I don't know if there's any walls in the building besides the one side. And that, if I remember right, Barb, that cost was fairly close to what this cost was with the building up. And the issue, one of the big issues we have there is where the square footage was, wasn't on where we needed it. It wasn't at grade. So much of it was up above. And then you have people traveling. But we did look at, you know, without even, with the shell up, that cost was very close. So you put that shell around those floors and that cost is more expensive than what this one is. So we did look at a new construction that was for sale. Any other discussion on the motion? 
If not, I'll move us to a vote on the motion that's on the floor to accept the low bid with the alternates. We will close the voting. And the motion passes. Thank you, Barbara. We'll look forward to um, the next step in this process. We'll move then to agenda item number four. This is considered the award of bids for removal of the hazardous material for the municipal building, city hall building. Glenn. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, this, of course, needed to wait until after this decision was made. Uh, we intend to do the hazardous materials removal after employees are moved out of city hall so that uh, the asbestos and those kind of uh, waste things are not I involved with the city employees. So I would expect that that would uh, start uh, late December, probably early January, and be completed by February. And I would add, regardless of whether or not this, uh, this project was moving forward or not, we need to deal with the hazardous materials there. We have a lot of issues with current City Hall, as you're aware. The boiler systems have been on, uh, a problem for a long time, and of course that's where some of the uh, asbestos removal is, uh, is being taken care of. The other is the plumbing and the insulation around the lines going throughout City Hall. So those things uh, really need to be done no matter what. Greg? Mr. Mayor, that was going to be my comment. Is my understanding is if we if we stalled this or forewent this project and we have to work with the heating unit, which is a couple yeah. years past its technically allowed life, and the other plumbing issues there, a lot of this abatement would have to happen. Would probably be more expensive also because we'd have to do it with the building occupied. I have just one quick question. They did the abatement next door, correct? Uh, up, up there, yes. yeah. Did I know they did some damage to the roof of our existing city hall? Was that all resolved with these this outfit? Yes, it is. It was amicable and good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Somebody had thrown down some. Yep. No, I, I just want to make sure they worked well with the city to get that yeah. resolved. Okay. Any other questions for Glenn? I make a motion we approve. Second. Motion by motion by Jim. Seconded by Craig. Discussion. If not, we'll move to a vote. Close the voting, and that motion passes. We move then to the consent agenda. We'll bring the items on the consent agenda up on the screen. And they include the uh, rural service district resolution uh, that has to do with the um, um, area where the um, um, bow and arrow area is out near the near the Merritt Center, correct? Archery range? Archery range, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll move on with the, uh, the other items on the consent agenda, consider the approval of the special assessment <laughs> deferral, consider the authorization to declare the surplus property for the Marshall Police Department, the wastewater treatment facilities project. We have an application for payment number four to Magni discussion. We have a uh, payment invoice to Bolton and Mink for the wastewater treatment facilities. We have a payment invoice to American Engineering Testing for the wastewater treatment facilities, and those are all tied to the PFA grant, which is the reason why it takes action. The MPCA air monitoring um, equipment site lease, uh, which is at the airport. And we have a resolution for the transfer and closure of the Small Cities Fund 223. We have an application for an exempt permit for Holy Redeemer Church for January 31st, 2020. And we have the bills in the project payment. So is there any <coughs> item on the consent agenda any member of the council wants removed for separate discussion? Um, I approve. I need that small cities grant one pulled off. Okay. Please. With the small cities and... I don't uh, know what number it was. Twelve. Uh, Twelve. Any other item? If not, Steve, you have a we'll motion. Approve as, as amended. Second. Second. Motion by Steve, seconded by Russ. Discussion? If not, all in favor, we'll move to a vote.
We close the voting and the motion passes. We'll move to agenda item number 12, the resolution to transfer and closure of the Small Cities Fund 223. Jim, you need to abstain. That's with Western Community Action or Small Cities Grant Program, correct? It's just a yes or no. If it is, I need to abstain. No. What is not okay, then it doesn't make a difference. No. Sorry about that. So is there a motion for this? I'll make the motion to approve. Second. Motion by Jim, seconded by Steve. Discussion? If not, we'll move to a vote. We'll close the voting and the motion passes. So that we'll move then to agenda item number 15. Agenda item number 15 is to consider the approval for the audit uh, service contract uh, for 2019 to 2022, Kyle, a point of order. This was tabled at a previous meeting. Do we need a motion to remove this from the table? Voice vote to remove. Yeah, I would entertain so motion by Craig. Second. Seconded by John to remove this item from the table. Discussion, voice vote, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, motion passes. Okay, now we'll move to agenda item number 15. This is the item that was tabled for additional information uh, and uh, the uh, recommendation. So Annette. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Before you tonight is a contract for auditing services for the years of 2019 to 2022. Um, on August 30th, um, four quote requests were sent to um, different auditing firms, which include Abdo Eichen Meyer, Clifton Larson Allen, um, Red Path and Bergen KDV. On September 19th, those quotes were received back by all four firms. Um, we then scheduled um, in-person interviews for the week of October 14th through the 20, the 14th through the 21st. Um, and then we had um, a Ways and Means um, committee to have a discussion on November 6th. Um, at that Ways and Means committee, um, it was recommended um, by the committee um, for Bergen KDV. Um, staff are still recommending Abdo Eichen Myers. Um, we feel that the history and the knowledge um, that Abdo Eichen Myers has to offer um, outweighs the, the cost difference. Um, and they play a very important role um, for continuing the progress that we've made over the past two years. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Annette. Um, uh, input from the Ways and Means Committee? Yeah, like uh, this was quite a bit of discussion at our Ways and Means Committee, and uh, there are several items that were involved. Um, one, of course, is the cost. If you look at the two, the, uh, um, the, uh, Bergen KD, uh, mm -hmm. KDV is less uh, on paper, about 40,000. Um, but there's, uh, as Ned said, there's a lot of different things and listening to the Finance Committee that I'd just like to kind of let the council aware of both sides of the, uh, of the request. Um, you know, it wasn't truly just cost that we were talking about when Ways and Means made the recommendation. Uh, we have uh, had Ibdo Ike and Meyer for quite a few years, and uh, it is a good uh, <laughs> plan to rotate the auditing uh, service so that we get a chance to get fresh eyes on everything and look at it. Um, I would say that the Finance Committee did point out that with the changeover in uh, uh, Abdo, Ike, and Myers, uh, we maybe would have had that anyway, but uh, uh, would like the idea of having a uh, new set of eyes on it, and I think that's probably one of the bigger things. Now, from the finance side, there's a few things, and a few things for the Council just to um, have you aware of, although there, uh, you know, on paper, I said, it looks like about a 40,000. That's probably not gonna be the savings that we're looking at because there's several things that come in play. One, um, the uh, Bergen KDV is uh, asking for five days of auditing time versus about two and a half mm -hmm. from our other auditors. Some of this is a result of a new auditor coming in and uh, versus a uh, an auditor that's had a lot of experience with us. 
that's gonna require more time by the finance department. Mm -hmm. And that's gonna be a, a soft cost that we're gonna see that uh, probably not able to put a finger on it and really say what that is. The other end of it is that uh, as we go through the, the four years, this is a four year contract that we're looking at, and as we go through that four years, as questions come up, and they will be, the finance department does make a call to the auditing company to ask questions, mm -hmm. and there will be research that probably needs to be done. In Abdo Ike's case, um, they probably have a pretty good handle on it because they've been doing it for many years, whereas a new auditor would require some digging in, mm -hmm. probably some research. That could end up costing us more. Um, I would like to say certainly the recommendation that came from the Ways and Means out of all this discussion was still to do the, uh, the Bergen KDV uh, auditing firm and this was certainly no negative reflection on Abdo Ike. They're a very good firm. All the firms are very reputable, all good firms. The bigger item that really was driving us was the, um, the change in uh, just an auditor looking at it. Uh, I was also gonna bring up that some of the conversation that we had that, uh, um, you know, the past, well, really the three years that the finance team that we've had has been in place has gone through and made quite a few changes within the, the structure. We just went through two of them tonight that we closed off two accounts. And uh, they do have a concern that, uh, um, you know, that they're gonna have to go through this with a new auditor and, and make sure everybody's understanding and seeing what it is. They've had that guidance and input from the previous auditor for quite a few years and were able to follow that. Uh, so I think that's part of the reason that you're making the recommendation. So there's been a lot of discussion back and forth. Uh, the recommendation from the three of us on Ways and Means was still to uh, go with a new auditing firm of uh, Bergdon KDV, but recognizing that, uh, you know, it's up to the council, to uh, the seven of us, to make that decision. So trying to give a good, even view of what both uh, firms can do or are uh, capable of doing and uh, viewpoints from both sides of it. So I don't know if any more that I missed out of there. No, that was great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, John. I guess the question I would have, it, in your review, you contacted the other cities that these both work for. Is, was there any complaints from the other cities that Bergen KDV work for, or are they very satisfied? No, with they were satisfied. Okay. And it was, from our point of view, was any of the four firms can perform an audit. It's what is gonna be the best for the city of Marshall, and we just viewed the progress that we've made and um, kind of that relationship um, that the finance staff has you know, had over the past two to three years just because finance has you've seen a huge change, so um, that's why we made that recommendation. Okay. Any other input? Craig and then Steve? Oh, uh, it was a consensus with the with the Ways and Means. Oops, you, you know, okay. okay. And Steve? So, John or Annette, whoever wants to answer it, the soft costs that will probably be experienced going with Bergen KDV, do you think that those will approach the forty-three thousand dollars that Mike and Meyer would? Probably not over the course of the four years, but the first two years are probably going to be where we're going to see the majority of those costs. Sure. So over the length of the time, we'd probably still save money with. Very likely, yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. With that being said, I would like to make a motion to approve the audit services of the Bergen KDV simply because we have to look out for the taxpayers on this. I'll second that. Motion by Jim, seconded by Steve. Discussion? Just with a, one other point, Mr. Mayor, it, and again, I think John kind of touched on it a little bit. This was in no way any reference to current city staff because we all feel that they have done a remarkable, outstanding job in, in their current position. Yep, so absolutely, like, well said. Yeah, yeah, as yeah, well as the current auditor has correct, been yeah, well. And yes, and I reflect that financially, we're looking out for the best, I believe we're looking out for the best interest of the taxpaying public. And, and, and that's what I said at the Ways and Means, we have a fiscal responsibility to the public. 
No. So. Other discussion on the motion? If not, we'll move to a vote. Close the voting. And the motion. Craig. Craig, are you going to vote? I just, yeah, I did, but it was a little too quick for me here. You want us to reopen it or? Yeah, well, it's, I mean, yes. Okay. The motion does pass. We weren't just waiting. No, I was okay. yakking over next to here. <laughs> we'll move then to agenda item number 16. The uh, This is the uh, something shiny. First item of new business is a lease agreement with uh, uh, Minsky and the city of Marshall. Sharon. Mr. Mayor and Council, this is a standard lease agreement with the Minsky system. We did have staff review as well as the um, city attorney did a thorough review and also made some revisions. Um, obviously, kind of going back on this, we looked at potential uh, temporary office space, and we've had assistance with this uh, review, also with the city assessor and the city engineer, and we believe that the uh, the best option for temporary office space is uh, Southwest Minnesota State University. Uh, you do see the uh, lease amount contained in the agreement. It does state that IT, electrical, and parking would be separate from this, although I don't foresee uh, a, a large uh, increase in cost in addition to the to the lease, lease agreement. We did um, state that this would be until uh, June 1st, 2021. If it needed to be earlier or later, uh, we could explore that option as well. So uh, our recommendation from the staff is to accept this lease agreement between the city of Marshall and Minsky. Craig? In the negotiations, we did point out how generous we've been with Minsky on their lease at the Merritt Center, right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one of the things that this does include is uh, it does include building maintenance, snow removal. Um, I don't know if I'm missing anything else, Gwen or Dennis, but uh, there's value into the into the lease as well. We will realign and redelegate current building maintenance staff that for City Hall. Uh, we've kind of discussed that previously as well, but um, I think that should be in consideration of the lease. But and so. my understanding, Sharon, is that the uh, SMSU uh, administration has been very responsive in, in what is needed or will be needed uh, for the preparation of this relocation of the council. Yes, we've had really good discussions with, uh, with the university, uh, their facilities director, as well as uh, some of the frontline staff in IT and, and their electricians on, on meeting our needs. In addition, uh, there were staff of SMSU that were relocated. And uh, I know that that uh, was not easy for them. In, in all cases, there's uh, obviously some, some comfort level of where they were at. And to relocate is never easy, as we'll soon find out. But um, we've had really good cooperation with SMSU. And, and really, uh, to be honest about this, this is our only option for temporary office space that would meet our needs. We don't really have another option. John? Uh, just a comment, uh, when you talk about the IT and electrical needs, uh, it's been some time ago, but we did have, or I did have a discussion with MMU uh, since they provided uh, fiber connections to all of our other buildings. And they were certainly willing to bring fiber into any location that we needed to, whether it be temporary or uh, permanent, but uh, uh, with the location of this location at the college, it's unlikely that we'll need to do much of anything with an IT because the uh, fiber connection does come in just uh, actually very sh close uh, to where this office spaces are. So that is actually a savings to the city that uh, not additional uh, fiber needs to be run, and I would assume where you don't have a whole lot of electrical needs, everything there is power-wise, we're in good shape pretty well all the way through. So 
Um, I think uh, I say not only this being maybe your only option, but it is a very good option from that aspect as well. Other, Russ? Um, Sharon, just a couple of things. Mostly it's on parking. Um, currently when, when a visitor goes out to the university, they have to go into the front entrance to get a visitor's pass. Are, are visitors to City Hall going to have to do that as well, or are they going to be able, with signage, going to direct them to temporary city offices to get a temporary pass? My, and the second part of that question is we currently have a number of city staffs that go to the, to the municipal building during the course of a week, park superintendent, street superintendent, whatever. Are they going to have a parking permit or are they going to have a temporary pass? Because I would hate to see $25 parking fees get uh, or, or tickets get passed along to employees or, or even visitors. I, you know, well, I, I to be sure, I, we're a little concerned about getting a ticket from one of our residents who are visiting City Hall or our own city staff. I think that we've all kind of maybe experienced a parking ticket out there, so they're they're uh, aggressive with it, and I'm sure that that's uh, part of campus safety, uh, to be honest, but we think it may occur, and we, we do have to have some discussion about do we have a get out of jail free card for some of these, <laughs> um, but I'll have Glenn maybe just kind of talk about some of the things we've talked about for visitors, and then also our vendors who do come on a regular basis. I don't know if you want to mention that, I can too, but you might speak better to it. Sure. Thank you, Sharon. Uh, if you would take a look at your uh, parking layout, you'll notice that there are 19 visitor spaces provided. They will be fully signed. Uh, similar to, the, they have some uh, other uh, signage that, that is reserved for certain uses out there. So those will be the, the areas that the visitors should park. And then there's, you can see the entrance signing, the directional signing to get them in the building. And then once inside the, the, the building, then there'll be monitors or um, wayfinding within the building itself too. But uh, like Sharon mentioned, we'll have several different types of parking. The 13 motor pool uh, spots on the northwest corner of the building is for typically the vehicles that are parked there, uh, city vehicles during the day, uh, then the visitor parking, and then we talked about um, uh, short-term parking. And if you can see, we, we're proposing the three 15-minute parking uh, signs along the north side of the building next to the gravel lot on the north side. Right now, that's a loading and unloading zone only. Uh, we didn't like the words loading and unloading if you were coming just to get a permit. So you can, we'll change that. Uh, our proposal is to change that to 15 minute parking so you can come up, park there, and there's like at least seven spots there. So if you're coming to get a uh, permit from parks or register, it's not gonna take you that long. That's the spot where you'd come. So we'll be telling the people that we do business with every day that that's where to come if that's what you want to do. Now, let's say you're a council member and a contractor as well. Uh, there, there may be like vendor permits that you can use and you can then park in those spots when needed, okay? It, it doesn't need to be in a visitor parking stall, for instance. So we'll work that out with the university. What, how many of those types of, of parking permits do we need? Uh, and it'll be a little bit of growing pains. We'll, whatever we need as we go, the university has been more than welcoming to us and uh, providing for our needs. But visitor parking is really, really important to us and getting communications out to the public, either through our permit system, or our website, or our Facebook page, or any of those types of things, we want to make sure that there's no misunderstanding for parking. Just, uh, you reminded me of one thing, Glenn, that uh, in the past, you used to get a, what was a vendor parking permit uh, 
for being on city council, and I haven't seen one of those last few years, but maybe that'd be something that they could, the college could reactivate and that would keep any of us, or you got one, right? Yeah. You, probably, you get how permits many all you, over. How many uh, yeah. don't have one? I do not have one. Okay. Yeah. No. So, I mean, that might be something if they get it to, then at least we would not be taking up a visitor spot. That's correct. And be able to use a different spot. So. That's right. And, and Glenn, yeah. the employees will get the typical SMSU permit that they can hang in their windshield, that they can park not only in these lots, but the other lots if they so desire. That is correct. Okay. Yep. Okay, other questions? If not, uh, what's the wishes of the council? I'll make a motion to approve the uh, lease agreement. Second. Motion by John, seconded by Craig. Discussion? If not, we'll move to a vote. We'll close the voting. And the motion does pass. Move then to the next agenda item, which is agenda item number 17. This is the agreements regarding the property located at 100, 200, 8th Street South. Um, Sharon, do you want to start with this or you want me to or? Um, I can start, and then if you want to add okay. to the to the conversation that we had. In 2018, the City Council directed staff to discuss with Nakmoos Enterprises ways to no longer further extend the contract for deed, which was done via amendment on an annual basis. I believe uh, there were three amendments to the original contract for deed. This resulted in a discussion that the mayor and I had with the Knock Moose's family and their, their business operation regarding their short and long-term interest in the building. And this is the Rauco storage building that's north of the county courthouse. In case someone wanted to know where this was uh, located at. And it also, that discussion also, um, there was discussion that the city uh, interest in the building, um, short and long term, may have also changed. And uh, this resulted in uh, a proposal to terminate the, the contract for deed and apply any prior payment not as a default payment, but really for um, future use of the building, which is stipulated in a lease agreement. And there, so there's um, really two agreements here. One is um, a lease agreement that would allow the city to continue to occupy the 12,000 square feet for city operations and storage similar to what we've been doing the, the last four years, continuing that for the next three years. And uh, there's uh, also an agreement that essentially terminates the agreement, as was uh, a wish of Nakmus and also the city based on our, both our short-term and long-term interests. And as I stated, the mayor it was, it was part of this discussion and if you wanna add to this, I'm, Probably sure. being very brief with this, but. Yeah, thank you, Sharon. You covered uh, uh, the essential components of the agreement. Uh, the drivers behind this is first off, um, there's an active operation that RELCO has in that building and they could, they want to continue that. Um, and that location, whereas, you know, four years ago, they may have been considering a, a completely separate location. Uh, they now determined that that location is working actually pretty well for them and it makes sense for them to continue in that current building and in fact they could utilize more space in there than what they currently have um, down the road. Our, as Sharon mentioned, that perhaps uh, the city's uh, uh, interest has maybe evolved over time because right now there's two major things that are 
the city's using that space for. One is for some confiscated vehicles, although some are outside, but some are inside. Um, and then there's some public works equipment in there that is either street department or wastewater. So there's kind of a mix of things. And there's um, kind of common access between the manufacturing portion of the building and they are active in manufacturing and then the storage and then the confiscated vehicles are, you know, they're not exactly secure. So long term, there's probably a better, um, hopefully a better location for those confiscated vehicles and it doesn't need to be a building with 24 foot sidewalls to store a automobile. Um, and there maybe is a, a more convenient location for long-term storage of, of public works equipment like that is needed, but not needed year round. And I'll use the example of the wastewater um, pumping apparatus that's used for uh, pumping the slurry out onto farm fields. That's, that's important. It's used for about a month in the fall and then it needs to be stored somewhere. So that's, that's in there. So then this allows us then to um, basically get credit for the initial payment that was made on that contract for deed and that's really being converted into, you know, fair market value for lease and then there's a calculation of prior use as well as extending that for years into the future. It also um, eliminates the responsibility that we would have if we would um, uh, complete the contract for deed, uh, we would need to come up with that final payment, which is roughly $290,000. So, and end up with a building that maybe doesn't fit our need, but perhaps more importantly, would displace an active manufacturing business. Sharon, probably more of an explanation that was needed, but that, that was really the, the basis of our conversation with Brian Nakamas. So questions <coughs> for hopefully Sharon. Uh, so how much have we actually paid on this? Is it the 10,000 earnest or do we pay that plus 240,000? How, how much have we paid so far? We paid 290,000 plus the 10,000 earnest. I'm, I am looking at the city attorney just to confirm that. Plus That's, annually the taxes that were right. due on the building as well. Yep. So we've paid $300,000 yes. and uh, for the 300,000 we're gonna get, we've had use of the building for four years and then we'll get another three years. So seven years. Does that seem like fair rental for the property? We did have our city assessor give us lease uh, rental rates per square foot. I would say that the amount per square foot is on the higher end, not on the lower end, but within range. And uh, they will pay us 6000 at the end of the lease? Just because that's the way math works out, that was the amount left over. I, I should also add, you know, in that the next four years, you know, I think staff will need to determine where our confiscated vehicles going to be stored. Maybe it's at a building at the airport or the that's being acquired at the Helena property, for example, or maybe there's some other alternatives, but there's in the next four years that will need to be researched as well as the storage of the equipment that I mentioned. Other questions? I move approval of the agreement Second. regarding the property. Motion by Craig. Craig, seconded by Steve to approve uh, both agreements. Discussion? So if I understand this right, the, we had agreed to purchase this building for approximately $540,000. And we paid them 300,000 for use of this building for a total of seven years at the end of this agreement. And then they still retained the building. Um, okay, that seems very expensive because you can build. And I'm just thinking of the shop. I'm in a 5,000 square foot shop, steel frame shop. 
you can build them for 150 to 200 thousand dollars. But but the we have to go back in time, and that is we made a deal to buy yep. this building, and we could have leveraged the original agreement, which is we'll fulfill the contract for deed, we'll pay the remaining 240 thousand. But the question would have remained, is this the best fit location for the city of Marshall? And after the contract for deed was made, both parties seem to kind of have a different interest in that from that original agreement, meaning that Ralco had interest in continuing to use the building and the city had some thoughts about, is this the best location for storage? So by all means, we could have use the leverage that we had with the contract for deed, which is paid paid the remaining 240,000, tell Ralco to leave, because we would then have full use of the building. But at the end of the day, we really wanted to get back to where we were, which is prior to the agreement, which is they own the building and we don't. And to do that, we had to really look at doing it this way and um, and putting some kind of value into how we use the building the last four years and and how we um, plan to use it for the next three. Yeah, I, you know, Jim, your point is well taken. That well, and is, just and I, and I understand because we have a business here we're working with goodwill and I mean going back four years looking maybe it wasn't and I'm not picking on anybody I don't want to, but maybe four years ago it wasn't the best decision. But now we're, you're correct, now we gotta figure out how to get out of this decision. I mean, to put it bluntly. Smaller point, but you know, after this agreement, then they're paying the taxes. So. Correct, it puts it back on the tax roll. It, it, it's, you know, I don't wanna say it was a mistake, but sometimes mistakes are made in, in business. I make them quite often in my business. You correct them and move on. Yeah, and there was a different situation. When we entered into this, there were other things on the table that didn't come Co correct. to pass. Yeah. And so, you know, looking back on it, hindsight, yeah, it's, it's expensive rent. It is, and like I said, sometimes you cut your losses and move on. It, right. it, it is what it is. Yeah, Welcome today, to today this is a better option. Mm -hmm. Four years ago, when we made the decision, with all those conditions being what we believe they were, what all the parties believe they would be, it was a, it was a good decision for the whole package. Now, because that came apart, it's not it's not a good thing anymore for us or for them. They need it back. We don't need it. Done yet. Yeah, I just uh, was going to go back on that four years and that decision back then. At the time, four years ago, that was a good move for us and for them. They were looking at moving out of there and uh, building a new facility in the industrial park. We were in bad need of a location to store vehicles. And uh, similar to one of our previous discussions, there wasn't any other place to go. So at the time this worked out to be good for us, it, the intent originally was for them to be able to move on and build a new building out uh, near their other warehouse facility. But uh, four years later and through those four years, uh, their needs changed. They found out that the building was doing, serving very well for them and uh, uh, fit their purpose as well as from our, our end of it, we were finding out that, yeah, it was a place that we needed, but now we've got some other options that we didn't have four years ago. So, yeah, it, it yeah, was it the greatest decision we made? Probably not, but uh, it was good at the time. And like I said, at this point, this is a good decision at this point. So whatever right or wrong, we're moving on. So. I do wanna add that the Knock Moose original, in the original discussion talked about uh, doing a long-term lease, paying rent, um, and extending the contract for deed. And the, the direction from council, and I went back to council at a work session was, do you still want us to find a way to not extend the contract for deed? And it was pretty clear that you did not want to extend the contract for deed. That would have been another alternative to uh, in addition to just fulfilling the contract for deed, so. This is cleaner and fairer, I think, to all the parties to just take the step and move forward. Right. Any other questions? If not, is there a motion? 
I'll make a motion to approve the. We've already got the motion. It's, it's already been done. We already had motion. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Well, any other discussion on the motion then? Um, the only thing I want to comment is I will support to simply, you know, I'm like I don't want to say it may seem like it's bad to our to the taxpayers, okay. but um, I do think like you, I don't know if Craig or puts it back in the tax rules. We get ourselves out of a, a situation that has changed, <laughs> and sometimes this stuff happens. It's it's it happens in the private sector, happens in the public sector. It's time to move on, so I will support it for that reason. Hopefully, as we look at another building, that we take a stronger look at what the use of the building is. Well, and the, I think the I don't want to lose that we have a, an active manufacturing business. Correct, correct. Yeah, I agree with that. Yep, and that, that's yep. all that in that point. I do think part of maintaining a positive business relationship was mm -hmm. definitely a factor in this, and I think if we didn't come to a mutual agreement and kind of strong arm it. I, I don't know if that would bode well for us. And I I can almost guarantee you, you would hear, hear public feedback on city relationship with our Correct. business leaders and it wouldn't have been good. So we had to keep that in mind as well. And, it, and it, that's part it of this. It comes down to the cost of goodwill. Correct, yeah. that's, that's, I agree with all that. Russ. Mr. Mayor, just, the, just a question. If so desired within the next three three years, we can terminate this lease with a 30 month, 30 day notice. Say for example, if we wanted to move out to the Helena property, if that happened and, and not most needed more space. That's correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. And in that case, the other part of that paragraph is that instead of $6,000 they pay us, it would be more. Mm -hmm. Okay, could you explain that again? So if, if it does, if we move out prior to the full term of that, um, then at the end of the term, there's $6,000 that is remaining of what we paid them. Say if we move out 12 months prior to that, that amount that is being credited to us for use of that facility, basically for rent, would be paid back to the city. So, so we could move out sooner than that, but there's also no immediate need to. We don't have another space right now. So if we moved out right now, what would be the amount we'd get? Um, math on that, Sharon, would be roughly $140,000. Um, it would be, you know, it's approximately 42000 so, yeah. yeah. So how much? It would probably be more like 126,000. 126,000, right. If we so terminate it right challenging now. Challenging me now with doing mental yeah. math. Right. <laughs> and we don't think it's to our advantage to terminate it now. We don't have any place to go. So we, yeah, we, we don't have any place well. to go and, and we need the space right now. Right. I think it comes. We need the space right now. We're right. using the 12,000 square feet. Right. But if something changes with the Helena property and that building out there in the next 36 months, we could terminate the lease. So we don't know even. Hey, we don't know, know what's going to happen. Yeah. Right. It could take 48 months out there. Right. Jim, if I remember correctly, the, the problem with your old storage shed that you had the cars in is they start to get a musty smell, correct? And that, and that becomes a problem with these vehicles. Yes. That was a problem with the old building. You know, this new building, it's a heat additive building. Yeah. So we still deal with some of the odors and stuff like that. Of course, the mayor commented on the security of the building itself. This would have been a concern for us. And maybe just not, doesn't suit our needs the way we need it to suit our needs. So. It, is, it is climate controlled, and that was unlike the buildings that you had before. Yes. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, other discussion on the motion? If not, I'll move us to a vote. Close the voting. Motion passes. We'll move then to the uh, agenda number 18, consider the ordinance for the map amendment for rezoning of Four Seasons LLC at 800 West College Drive. Welcome, Ilya. Thank you, Mayor Council. Thank you, Mayor Council. Uh, uh, let me orient everyone. This is West College Drive here. 
and this is a legend field road, and we are talking about this property. Uh, UCAP, as you know, is building its uh, new daycare facility, and they were looking for a temporary uh, location for their daycare while they're finishing the building. So they found this location for their uh, use. <coughs> Unfortunately, it was a wrong uh, zoning district. It's, as you can see, this is all uh, a general industrial district. We, and daycares are not uh, a permitted use in the industri industrial district. So uh, after discussion, uh, it was decided that the best way is to rezone this uh, to general business. You can see there's a general business here already. So it would make sense to rezone this to general business and that's what the owner applied for. And the staff recommended to also rezone this area to make it continuous here, the whole thing as a general business. Uh, the building here is a state lottery building, so it will fall in line with the uh, general business district. So it went through the planning commission. The recommendation was to approve, and it was uh, introduced uh, on the last meeting. So recommendation is to approve uh, the rezoning. Okay, thank you. Uh, any comments from the planning commission? Glenn? No, not really. Any questions the council has on this recommendation? Just one quick question. Did, was there any discussion about extending that even farther west or some? Uh, at some point there was, but the owners there did not want to do it at this okay. time. Hmm. We are waiting for the, uh, at some point there will be new uh, comprehensive plan and then we'll go along with that thing. Any other questions for Elia? Move to approve. Second. Motion by Steve, second by Russ. Discussion? If not, we'll move to a vote. We close the voting and the motion passes. We'll move then to agenda item number 19. This is the introduction of the ordinance amending uh, section 86 1 definitions and then call for the public hearing. Ilya. Uh, thank you, Mayor Council. So, uh, as you're aware, uh, there is a, a company which is building a uh, electric charging station wants to place the electric charging stations for the electrical vehicles uh, at the uh, liquor store location. Uh, and it so happens that the location that is preferred is in the front of the parking lot. What happens is that this is a required front yard. And uh, according to the ordinance right now, you cannot put any accessory equipment, which this will be considered right now, in the required front yard. Uh, it would, uh, it looks like Electric uh, charging stations will be built more and more. So it makes sense to uh, change the ordinance and exclude electric charging station from the uh, requirement of the prohibition of putting it in a required front yard. And of course, we don't want to have a abuse. So that's why, the, uh, as you can see, the uh, uh, change is to allow only two electric stations in the required front yard. If someone wants to have more, they can put them back in the uh, uh, parking lot. But uh, for the, uh, they can put two in the required front yard. So that's the uh, one change. And also the another change is that we are changing some definitions of the um, users. It's not related to the electric station, but it's just make, will make the staff uh, the decisions easier. It will uh, make it more straightforward and easier to understand what, uh, what is required in the, each district for mixed occupancies. Are any, any questions on this? Aren't they Greg? putting four at the liquor store? Is it only two? I thought it was four. There are four parking controls. <coughs> Each charging station has two. Oh, okay. okay. So, so you would park say, in four cars. Right. We, we say uh, Got it. charging station, we mean basically uh, double outlet. Du yeah, double. Okay. Yes. All right. Yeah. Thank you. And the, um, the utility, you probably know the term on this. There's like a big box there that's the transformer. The, uh, that's allowed anyway, right? The transformer is the utilities uh, part, but there is also, how do you call it? There's a mini substation. A mini uh, substation. That will be uh, uh, required for my understanding for each, uh, for ev every time you have the charging station, but in this case it's just one uh, for two uh, posts and uh, it's just part of the uh, accessory equipment. John? Yeah, that it's a rapid charging system, so it requires considerable amount of current. Correct. That's why the larger transformer yes, and the, the, high the mini and substation. Yes, correct. Yes. Um, I guess just a couple of other things in the 
uh, you know, leave, maybe leave it to the chair of the LNO, but uh, in our discussion on that, uh, we were talking about there are already provisions for other accessories in the front yard, such as a flagpole and, and, and things like that. We're adding just uh, uh, the allowance for two stations with the uh, need to keep clearances and views from traffic um, clear and uh, uh, that's the reason for locating some of the equipment where it is now at the liquor store. It, it's not blocking a um, view from either coming out of the Pizza Ranch or any of the other driveways and, and that's a consideration wherever these things go in is that we want to keep a clear uh, clearance view at the corners and uh, not have an obstruction of traffic. So. And it will always apply that it will yeah. not be blocking the station. I just also want to mention this is a kind of a fast track so it hasn't been through the Planning Commission uh, and it will go to the Planning Commission uh, tomorrow. Okay. But this is just introduction. And call for Any other hearing. questions? If not, is there a motion for the introduction? So moved. So moved. Second. Motion by Steve, seconded by Jim. Discussion? If not, we'll move to a vote. Close the voting and the motion passes. Thank you, Ilya. We'll move then to the um, agenda item number 20, the Commerce uh, Industrial Park, Michigan uh, Road Improvement Project. We have a change order to consider the final as well as the acknowledgement of the final um, pay, at, pay request. Glenn. Thank you, Mayor and Council. You can see that the uh, final change order resulted in a $43,000 decrease uh, to the project. Uh, it's probably about 1% of the total project cost. Uh, so you can see we, we do try to keep our expenses within the budget at the moment. Actually, the, the decrease was only 6600 No, the total, take, no. take a look at the uh, amounts that that we reduced. Oh, the, the total quantities. decrease is 43401 That's correct. Glenn, do you want to make this motion? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll move the motion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a motion by Glenn, seconded by Steve, to uh, approve this uh, change order. Discussion? If not, we'll move to a vote. We'll close the voting. And the motion passes unanimously. There you go. We'll move then to agenda item uh, 21, the considered two application for the exempt permit for Southwest Minnesota State University Foundation. Any questions about this? If not, is there a motion? Vote. Second. Motion by Craig, seconded by John. Discussion? If not, move to a vote. We'll close the voting. Motion passes. The, uh, that brings us then to uh, agenda item number 22, Commission Board Liaison reports. The, um, from mine, the Southwest Regional Development Commission does have their uh, monthly meeting this Thursday afternoon. I'll be there. Um, the Fire Relief Association did have their quarterly meeting last Tuesday. I was not able to attend that. Um, Carla Drown did attend it. Um, and reported back as well as there is a report that the not only is the fund performing well, they don't anticipate a lot of um, changes caused by um, impending re retirement, so that also keeps the fund healthy and it's a well-managed fund. With that, Craig? Uh, mine have not met. Steve? Likewise. Glenn? Uh, Planning Commission meets tomorrow and then Housing Commission meets Monday. John? Mine did not meet, but just a reminder that a week from tonight, uh, MMU is having their public hearing uh, regarding water and electrical rates. Russ. Library board uh, has not met since the last meeting. Police advisory has not met. CDB, um, like a lot of other of our local commissions, are looking for new board members. Um, we had an extensive presentation on a CDB app. So they're looking at that very, uh, very expensive presentation, but we're still looking at it. Uh, and they're finalizing their 2020 budget, and they finalized their agreement with the chamber. So that's all I have. And Jim. Might have not met. Okay, we'll move then to uh, council member individual items. Jim, let's start on your end. Um, the only thing I have, and I don't know who else went through it, I went through the Alice training with, with, for the city of Marshall today. It's kind of an eye-opening 
experience. It taught me that I really want to sit where Glenn's sitting <laughs> and not over here. <laughs> so he's just smiles. But other than that, I have nothing. I would echo that that Alice training was was very good. So. And you're going to hear the same from me. It's just uh, I think it's, it brings in a whole new aware, awareness to where you're at, the exits. I mean, even when you go to a hotel, I mean, you look where the other exit is. But I mean, we were in our uh, Ways and Means committee meeting the other week, and the, and we, if a if an active shooter came in that that front end, we'd only have one way to go, and that's there the kitchen. And he'd get us both times. So I mean, so it's just an awareness. But very well done by the officer. Very very well done. John. Just makes it a little more scary sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, that's all. Uh, different item. Uh, uh, go by quite often. If you notice the artwork that's on the side of the Varsity Pub is really starting to show its aging and fading. And I do believe we have another uh, print of that or whatever on the vinyl stored at the Varsity Pub. Just kind of, uh, I don't know who actually is going to be putting that up, and that may be a question that we need to resolve in the next uh, few months because I think when it comes about spring, we're either going to have a very nice white panel up there or uh, with a few silhouettes or whatever, but uh, I think we're going to need to do that next summer. I would not recommend it doing it right now. Just a thought on that, shouldn't we wait until after the Block 11 project is completed if that's going just in case there's construction dust and other wear and tear? That's I would agree. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Craig? I don't have anything, thanks. So I'm gonna put on my public health hat and, and uh, let everybody know that I met with Southwest Health and Human Services Public Health and they are um, shocked and uh, concerned about the amount of vaping that's going on and the age at which vaping is starting. I mean, the CDC uh, latest data shows that um, probably close to a 25% uh, of eighth graders have tried it and certainly going up into high school and they also have a kit that shows all the neat little tricks that vaping companies have instituted from a jacket that's got the ties for your hoodies that are actually vapors, mm -hmm. and backpacks that have vaping in them, and a watch that you can pop out and it's a vape. So they actually, there was a video that sh uh, they put 25 vaping devices in a classroom. And they had the teachers come in and they had this the parents come in. I'm gonna let everybody guess the amount of vaping <coughs> devices that were found by anybody. What'd you say about Zero. No, it was, they were a little bit, no, five. Five. They found five of the 25, and that was teachers and principals and people who are trained to do it. So again, I said, what would be the support be for Tobacco 21 and Marshall? Public health is all for it, all for it. So I think that we seriously should bring it to LNO and look at making <coughs> Tobacco 21 and make Marshall a Tobacco 21 city and go from there. And hopefully the county jumps on board because the studies again, Kids and alcohol, yeah, kids do it, but where does most of the alcohol happen? College, when they're 18, and the 21-year-olds are buying it for the 18-year-olds at college. It doesn't happen that much in high school. Tobacco's 18, it draws all the way down. So if you can spatially separate it, we can help prevent and cure. And studies show if you don't stop, if you don't start smoking before 25, you don't start. So I'm supportive of this being, um uh, discussed and considered and uh, recommended from the uh, legislative ordinance committee. Craig? Yeah, and, and I don't mean to go out of turn, but I just, I do want to weigh in on this, and I'm typically not big on nanny stating things at all, okay? I don't like us getting into people's lives. However, because um, I started smoking when I was 17, and I fought it on and off and got back hard on it at 23, and, and only quit 20 years ago, and I have pretty significant lung damage because of it. I kind of wish that we would have, and it was Surgeon General warnings and all that, but I was young and dumb and, and continued to do it, and I would, I would also fully support this. I am absolutely appalled at the marketing with the vaping. I just, I think it's absolutely ridiculous. Just commenting versus old and dumb. Yeah. <laughs> 
oh. like some of us. Yeah. So, so we can put that on the legislative ordinance committee. Yeah, I think that's order. a great. I, that I would support absolutely that, support that also. I, there. That would be good. I'm supportive. I know last time it came up, we had a kind of council direction was to work with the county. And have you gone any? Has that gone anywhere? You know, well, Steve. It was mentioned to the county. This, so the Southwest Health and Human Services have mentioned it. They haven't really gotten anywhere. Yeah. But I right. think that if we've got, we've got some really good presentations and some really passionate public health nurses who are all for this, and uh, they, they could probably sell the county very easily on this. And this would be more effective if, if this was handled on the state level. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But let's not wait for the state. That's a titch past our pay scale. Yeah. Okay, anything more, Steve? That is all. Glenn? I have nothing. Uh, just two quick things the, um, uh, that are upcoming. Kyle and I will be doing a couple presentations and coming up on the upcoming census, and I anticipate that there'll be more discussion about the uh, trying to get a complete count in the 2020 census. And then um, tomorrow and Thursday, Glenn, and Jason's, still, Jason's gone, but the um, uh, Minnesota floodplain managers are having their conference in Marshall, and I know um, our staff is hosting and helping with a tour, and I'm their luncheon speaker about the long history of flooding in southwest Minnesota. So. Do we know the luncheon speaker by chance? You do. I think we do. You Isn't do. he one of us? Uh, it could be. Could be, yeah. So anyway, so that's coming up uh, this week too. And it's, so with that, let's move then to the um, um, next agenda item, uh, which is staff report, Sharon. I, I don't have anything further beyond the written report I provided in the administrative brief. Thank you, Sharon. Glenn? Block 11 is about complete for demolition and backfill and we're looking forward to the next step of that block. And it looks like a well-managed project, so. It, it went very well. They found some things that, you know, we knew we were gonna find some things that we didn't expect. For instance, under the Middleton building was another demolition site, all bricks and <laughs> stuff. Under the Tubbs Texaco, Tubby's Texaco, uh, we found uh, a burn site where they, you know, there must have been a building there before. They put it in a hole, lit it on fire, and it's just cinders that we found, a nice thick layer of cinders. Uh, we did not find any tanks. We found the sand um, replacement where ones had been. So that was a good thing to find. But we also found multiple foundations for other buildings that were not uh, seen above ground. It was a good thing to take out. Right. And Dennis. Thank you, Mayor. Just reviewing existing contracts out there, continue to work with Helena, worked with MMU on the charging station location. Legislative and ordinance has had a couple of meetings. We've had a few other things that should be coming forward. Indicate planning commission meets tomorrow on their agenda is um, dealing with the location of the new middle school building or the new elementary school building out there. There's Quite a lot going on there. Block 11, we're getting the real estate documents put together as part of the pre-development requirements for the city that will be given to the potential developer. And worked with the developer and the banker for the unique opportunities phase two of their second building. And I, talking to Glenn, they've, they've submitted the building permit application, so they are still hoping to get in the ground this fall with foundation. So. They're moving ahead. I'm going to ask you to talk just a little bit more about the Helena uh, discussion. I had a, um, a phone call from the Tom Peterson, the Commissioner of Agriculture, and the department is um, concerned about the, um, would like to see that uh, cleanup go faster um, than what Helena, um, what is in their plans. Right, right now, I have not heard from Helena since we've signed the agreement. We are doing our due diligence here. We have to provide a survey and appraisals on the financing side for the MnDOT. We have, um, Dan Butel has provided a survey which delineates the 
runway protection zone, which will then require the demolition of that existing building. I have made the assumption that Helena is doing their side of the due diligence to require the inspection and the cleanup. Now, maybe that is not happening, and maybe I do need to have that discussion with Helen. Yeah, well, let's have, we'll have it. Okay. We'll discuss that. Online. Yes, but but the, the inspection and the request for cleanup, that comes from Helena. That has to be completed prior to the closing. So. Um, but there's no deadline on it. There is not. Right. So you're saying the Department of Agriculture would like a deadline uh, sooner than later? Yes, they would. All right. Okay, so we will then move then to the remaining items, which include the administrator brief, which Sharon referenced, the uh, information items, as well as the uh, um, information on, on the reduction of the employer share of the PEIP premium. That's just for council members' information. I don't know if you want to add anything to that. That is the reduction in fee for the services of our broker. Um, Bill Chahusky took a reduction that I think people had a higher rate for him and he's going to stay at the same rate with the service cooperative and carry that forward with PEEP. That's the difference. Okay. Um, as well as the listing of the upcoming meetings, is there anything else to come forward? If not, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Motion by Russ, seconded by Jim. Discussion? If not, we'll move to a vote. Post the voting and the motion passes, we are adjourned. <laughs>